Hello, this video is going to review the seven short run cost functions. This is something that always gives people uh, some difficulty. Uh, they have a hard time remembering the short run cost functions, how they're related to one another, and so on. So I'm going to try to pre present a very simple way of learning all seven short run cost functions and how they relate to one another. Let's start with the following. This is going to be three out of the seven short run cost functions. On the left hand side here we have total cost. Total cost is, this, is just a granddaddy of all the cost. It's the sum of all the firm's cost of production for producing a given level of output. So this is total cost. The next part of this is variable cost. So total cost can be broken down into two components. It's the sum of all the firm's cost, and one of those components is variable cost. These are costs such as labor, raw materials. These are costs associated with variable inputs. So variable cost, think of variable inputs. So variable cost will vary with output. Vary with output. The last component of total cost is fixed cost. Fixed cost are associated with fixed inputs. This would be things like building rent, uh, interest payments on debt, ta property taxes perhaps. Fixed costs don't vary with output. don't vary with output. So new, go, let me go to a new slide here. So again just to recap there are seven short run cost functions. The first three are going to be related as follows. Total cost equals the variable cost of production for the firm plus the fixed cost. To get the next three costs of production in the short run we're going to divide this equation by the quantity of output, the quantity produced. So let Q equal the quantity produced. Quantity oops, produced. Quantity of output. So if we multiply this top equation by the quantity produced, we have the next three short run cost functions. On the left hand side we have AC or average cost. VC divided by Q that's going to be average variable cost. And FC fixed cost divided by the quantity of output that's going to equal average fixed cost. So again let me explain. On the left hand side we have basically the cost per unit. On average, how much does it cost to produce a typical unit of output? And as we're going to see, this equals average variable cost plus average fixed cost. What is average variable cost? The variable cost per unit of output. What does a typical unit of output have in terms of variable cost embodied in it? like labor, raw materials. That's what we're talking about with average variable cost. And then average fixed cost is just going to be the fixed cost per unit of output. How much building rent is embodied in the typical unit of output? That would be an average fixed cost idea. So let me put on a clean screen here. So again, recapping, average cost equals average variable cost plus average fixed cost. And we learn that average cost is nothing more than total cost divided by quantity. Average variable cost is 
variable cost divided by quantity and average fixed cost is fixed cost divided by quantity. Okay. Uh, so that's six now out of the seven short run cost functions. One more to go and that's marginal cost. Marginal cost or MC is going to be given by the derivative of the total cost equation with respect to output or the derivative of the variable cost equation with respect to output. If you're not using derivatives, we can write the algebra counterpart and just use these change in symbols. So that's marginal cost. Uh, a few other things you should know about marginal cost it is the slope of total cost or the variable cost curve. So it's either the slope of the total cost or the slope of the variable cost curve. That's what it's measuring. And the definition of it is it just gives the, the change in total cost from producing one more unit of output or the change in variable cost from producing one more unit of output. So I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, my next video will look at the seven short run cost functions using some numerical examples.